if you run with me I gotta work for the both of us I'll put you in the driver's seat Don't gotta hurry in the name of love When you ride with me Gotta worry when tomorrow comes I'll put you in the driver's seat I think it works like Japan, so one platform goes more than one place, so need to be careful when you bought the train. And the good thing is, it's a direct train, I don't have to change another place. So I'm waiting for the Bell Grave train in 12 minutes. get our way earlier because I will get lost but we made it on time I'm so proud of myself even though I look a little bit lost at the train station like I tapped the, my key card wrongly not like this but like this direction and the staff I think she noticed that I look very blur so she told me to go down to escalator and turn right and I just went the lah after that she came down again to tell me that hey, there's a delay in the train. I think you should get on any train and change at some station. She's so nice to come down and tell me. I made it! After about one and a half hour. It's very limited. I feel like my
already so hungry. <laughs> so thing keeps flying into my eye. I cannot do it. I don't know how many times that black black thing go into my eyes. I cry know how many rounds already. Sorry. Can I this? Wait. Uh, take one <laughs> The hot chocolate. Vegan carrot cake. It's another popcorn cauliflower, about $25. cauliflower itself is quite basic it's not very seasoned but you should eat more with the sauce so it's okay 
the few vegan snack that I enjoy. <laughs> Wow, daily experience are already uh, 8.5 over 10 it's a very simple kind of activity it's kind of slow but I think I guess there's just some simple things in life that we should really learn to appreciate why I give it 8.5 because it took me 1.5 hour to travel over here day Ugh. and the uh, black black thing that was flying around it keep on trying to get into my eye so minus 1.5 the menu is freaking fast
Just one of the stretchy, stretchy that eat me. <laughs> the Palagruner Espresso Bar rating okay, six point five over ten. The stuff is very friendly, like as usual. I've never seen like rude stuff ever in Melbourne. But the food wise, like what I say, it got ink, it got sian, it got swan. <laughs> yeah, I didn't finish it leh. I ate like only thirty percent. Yeah, and I don't know what's the original price, but he only charged me fifteen dollars for the spaghetti and the watermelon something granita. Cause he said I barely ate the spaghetti. So yeah, this is my writing. This is so cool. hesitating between Earl Grey and Taro but I think Taro taste is quite unique this is 6 dollars with unlimited topping Sibei Hua Suan better than those bubble tea shop there's like grape, strawberry, pineapple, rainbow jelly, popping boba custard, pearl I don't know what else I put up <laughs> they're nice cheers to so last day in Melbourne and it's so Bruh. It's only 7 pm. Aku nak tengok apa ni? Ayo, my last day. Time check. 7 pm. Okay, it's 7 51 and I'm back to my Airbnb on my last day here 
because there's nothing for me to do outside anymore. So let's do a summary of this trip. As a first timer, first time female solo trip to Australia or Melbourne. So I wrote down the pros and cons, and I think they contradict each other to a certain extent. So the pros is, um, yeah, people are all very friendly, especially the staff lah. I've never seen like rude people. They just, they just feel like very welcoming. So I can imagine why when I work in the hotel, like Australian always comment that we are not warm enough, because that's the way they fun they function here so i think when they go to singapore they expect the same standard but obviously we cannot keep up with their hospitality la. second one would be accessible public transport you can liter- literally get like tram bus um train everywhere it's quite accessible it's connected and all la. and it's not too complicated like japan the third point would be a lot of Asian Asian food Asian people so it's not a place or country where but you cannot adapt to their cuisine because there's always something for you you want western you want Malay you want Vietnamese Taiwanese it's just everywhere so you don't have to be afraid of no food last point will be it is a dog heaven country (coughs) because I guess because it's an Amor country, it's not very like Muslim country like Malaysia. You don't really see dog all over the place. This one is like you see in the, at the park, in the train, like just everywhere, like see me the way kind of it's still very kind. It's like a rush of energy uh, when you see cute dogs running around. So I already say it's gonna contradict every point that I see just now. So friendly people, 老师很多, but 校郎也是很多. And I didn't have like a good encounter on my first day because there's this like I think he's sending ping. He like came so near to me and started like speaking vulgarity. So I'm just like then he somehow wanna come back and see again. I'm super scared. Ever since then, I'm quite wary of people around me I just feel like it's all over the CBD area la. I think St. Kilda is 比较少小狼 at least I didn't even see any yeah so because of all these kind of people I don't deem this place as very safe as compared to Singapore I have to like constantly be careful of where I am what am I doing I won't wear my airport both sides because I don't know if like you may have seen Jing Ping at the back of Yeah. Second point. Mm, public transport. Even though it's very accessible, but it's fucking expensive. To a certain extent lah. Maybe because the first day I'm still not familiar. I never read the tram system or, or whatever. My friend already warned me. So for three stops from Southern Cross to the stop near to my Airbnb is five dollars. It's freaking expensive. Ever since then, I still take like public transport for long distance. But like if it's within the CBD area, I'll just walk like twenty minutes walk, thirty minutes walk that kind. It doesn't feel long lah, cause it's like quite fast I guess. The third point is Asian food. Asian food do a lot, but the food choices here are very expensive. I think through my vlog, you will see the cost breakdown. At least in Singapore, you can get like chicken rice for $5, but here it's impossible. Like even a fruit sandwich is gonna cost you like $8. Actually, I don't know what's cheap. Even the Queen Victoria's Market, the donut, is only kuai. So what is cheap? <laughs> what is $5? Even the drink cost me six ninety. The taro milk tea, the jasmine milk tea is eight dollars. 
maybe the bottle kind like, would be lesser than five dollar but yeah so it's expensive lor. fucking expensive so all in all this Melbourne trip is okay it's quite enjoyable to a certain extent but it does get lonely when you're alone and I'm not a talkative person and I don't think I look friendly so I always have this like RBF face so nobody dares to approach me or like talk to me that kind then sometimes I sell sell and then I suddenly sell to a sell lang not sell yeah so it can look quite lonely and because you're alone sometimes even when queuing for things is like not that easy like when I went to Puffing Billy to eat you have to get a table first get the table number and go and queue to order so I had to rely on hoping that nobody will take my umbrella just put it at the table and go back to queue that kind of thing lor. but other than that this is my first solo trip and I'm very proud of my achievement I call it an achievement because I think it takes a certain gut and confidence to be able to travel completely alone to a foreign country no friends no family it's not like a country where you've go before if you ask me go Thailand I'm not scared I can speak their language not that I cannot speak English here yeah I'm not scared of Thailand because I go before but here it's completely new so I count it as a brave move and I'm very bad with direction like the city mapper probably tells me I just need to walk 6 minutes but I'm gonna take 15 minutes to reach the destination because I always detour like, I'm always at the wrong direction somehow every single day but this whole trip I only asked for a direction twice first time is when I was taking the tram to St Kilda I just wanted to know if I was in the right direction because both side of the train is the same number <laughs> Yeah, but if I man- as long as I manage to get on the right direction, right, coming back is not a problem, cause you kind of like just walk back the same direction, ma. And whenever you take like long distance tram from Saint Kilda to CBD, you start like noticing the stops. So next time when you take the tram, right, you kind of know like, hey, I should be going this direction instead of that that direction, because you kind of like hear the stops as you take the trams, which is a plus point. And the second time where I asked for direction is today, the last day, when I'm supposed to take the railway to Belgrave station for the puffing BB. So, yeah, so I never take their train before ma like the MRT. So I tap the cards, so tap the wrong direction. It's this instead of this, even though the diagram was show, but I never see ma. So I was like, uh that <laughs> that then I was like, eh, wrong direction. So I put it this way. Then I go in, the staff look at me. This one la, very blur. Then she kind of asked me where I want to go. Then she say, two escalator down, right side. So I waited long. Because the city mapper will tell you the train, the next train is what time, what time's the schedule, that kind of thing. But I think there's some delay today. So the train that I was supposed to take is delayed. So this staff came from two escalator up all the way to where I was sitting, tell me that Hey, I think there's some delays with the train. I suggest you to take any of the train that is coming and just change in another stop. And that was like so nice of her. I'm so touched. If she never come down, right? I would have just sat there and missed my puffing baby. And I would be so pissed off. So I still that a lot of things in life, it had to happen for a reason somehow <sighs> but I'm very thankful for all the unrun in my life all the nice people that I've met through this trip even though not a lot yeah so this is a summary of my 5-6-7 5 days 4 nights in Melbourne will I come back again? Melbourne particularly maybe not maybe I'll just go to like Sydney, Brisbane or other places yeah I don't really like to recycle my place unless it's places that I really like to go like Japan Korea Thailand the kind, uh, Taiwan this kind of place I always recycle but Melbourne 
不需要啦。It's seven forty. I think I just need to be out by nine. So now I'm trying to finish the dumpling from Shandong Momo. It's actually not bad, lah. When you eat, when eat with your empty stomach, I think you'll be able to appreciate it better. As compared to having a half full stomach, hey, 回家啦。I'm so sorry, Juju, but I think I lost one of your <laughs> tro uh, luggage view. You view. I, I feel like it's a bit imbalanced. I look, there's no wheels here. <laughs> Last meal in Australia. I got a hot chocolate, small, and a hash brown. <laughs> I think the hot chocolate here just tastes better than Singapore. Mm. You're eating shit. One thing I notice about traveling alone is, even though I know I can buy, but I shouldn't overbuy because at the end of the day I cannot finish it. This is only about one hot chocolate and one hash brown.